Investing in buy to let property, it might be more affordable than you think. So I want to be looking into the financials of property. I think people really overestimate and sometimes underestimate what it actually takes. But I'm not just talking about the refurbishment. I'm talking about the overall. So we're going to start with identifying your goals and setting the criteria. A lot of people have this sort of speedy mentality and a lot of it is down to people like me, trainers. If you're watching for this first time, you won't know, but if you have been watching, you'll know I run a property company and an education company. In the education company, I really like the get rich, slow mentality. I like cutting through the shit as you've probably realized already, but a lot of trainers out there, it's very hypey, get rich quick, quit your job in 30 days, blah, 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 financial freedom in the night. It's like, fuck off. Like there's nothing in property that is quick, but it molds our personality that we go now, 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 now. And then what you figure out is you're always in a rush to get nowhere. And so instead, slow down, to speed up. And one of the key things that we do is set our objectives. So what outcomes are we actually looking for? Why are we looking to invest in property? What's interesting is when the, the National Landlord Association did a survey of its users, 40% of people invest in buy to lets for the cash flow, 30% for capital growth, 20% for the tax savings that you can get, and 10% for other reasons. I find that kind of crazy. And the reason why is you could almost flip that on the head when it comes to the benefit of investing in property. So I would say the number one benefit of investing in property is the massive tax savings. Think of the richest people in the world. What do they own? A shit ton of property and then they raise debt against it for tax savings. Number two is capital growth. Over 80% of your wealth in property is through capital growth. And then finally, cash flow. So I'm not saying cash flow shouldn't be the number one motivation, but please do not underestimate capital growth and tax savings because that will take up over, make up over 80% of your wealth. But get clear on your objectives, your outcomes, your direction, your criteria, because a goal without a timeline is just a dream. But if you don't have goals in the first place, then you're misdirected. And so what we need to do is really clarify these objectives so we've got an anchor in the future that we can start moving towards. When we're assessing the criteria, I'm looking at a macro level. So I'm not going analyzing the criteria of this one property, but I am looking at the more macro sense. So a geography, the location of my properties, you'll notice that a lot of properties that I talk about will be in chunks areas. Yes, I invest down in London and surrounding areas, but I also invest heavily up in Yorkshire, West and South Yorkshire predominantly. Not only do I believe massively in the area, it's also local, so I can control a lot of different elements. Building a property portfolio is not as simple as finding a great deal, I assure you. It's finding a deal, negotiating it, getting it through legals, getting the finance in place, getting a refurb team there, getting it managed at the end of it, and then, of course, making sure the accounting's in place, making sure it's tax effective, and getting an effective refinance in the next two to five years. <gasps> You need to be on the ground for that as much as possible, right? So when I'm looking at these criteria, I'm going to be looking at location, the crime rate in the area. I'm going to look at the tenure of property. If any of this you don't know, let me know in the comments. I'll do some niche videos on it for you guys, okay? All of these things make up the criteria, and then we can look at purchase prices, the yield, the capital growth focus in the area, and the return on capital employed as a combined return, also known as IRR. Again, let me know if you want to find out about any of that in the comments and I'll do more for you. But the more you understand about your criteria, the easier it is to say no to opportunities. And often that is the problem, by the way. It's not the fact that we struggle to say yes. We're all pretty good at saying yes. It's the fact we say no, 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 no. And we cut off opportunities, often the wrong ones. But sometimes if you understand your criteria, you know you're only looking at 5% of the market. And that's what we need to be focusing on. Next, we need to be evaluating financing and affordability. It's all right me going, I want to buy properties in London. It's like, well, that's great. But the average property that I'm buying in London is about 800,000. And then when I look at the numbers, even if I look at financing roofs, it's still going to be about 350, 400,000 of my own money per property. Not many people have that. And by the way, I don't buy and build buy to lets there. I do flips, assisted sales and things like that. My buy to let portfolio, almost all of it is in West and South Yorkshire because I believe in the economics a lot more. But when you're looking at your financing, you need to be true to yourself. You need to be honest with yourself. Now, 
When you're scaling a portfolio, initially you're going to use your own money. So if you've got uh, 50 grand, 100 grand, really 100 grand plus is what you really want to be looking at. And that's going to be the sweet point of buying some amazing buy to let properties. And then what you're going to do is use OPM, other people's money. Now, it might be a weird concept, but actually there are thousands, millions of people that have got money in the bank in the millions that want to get a better return than they're getting in the bank account, which is very low right now. So you're able to facilitate that while scaling your portfolio. At this point, by the way, if you are watching this and you want to scale your portfolio, but you don't have the time or experience and you want to make sure that you don't screw up, especially with your first one or two, then put APG in the comments. And what we actually do is help build those for you. So put APG or I'll put a link and pin it to the top. And what we can do is just have a chat, a one to one strategy session and see how we get on from there. So affordability and financing is going to come from a, a few different routes. So a lot of people right now are purchasing cash to take advantage of the power that they've got to get. Not so much the discounts, because people often obsess about discounts, which I think is ridiculous, but that's a video for another time. Instead, what you want to focus on is how can I get a property in the most competitive area? You might go, what? Why would I want competition? Well, of course you want competition. If you're buying something and you've got no competition whatsoever, what happens when you want to sell the property and there's no competition to buy it then? So you want to buy it in a great area with great capital growth where people are all over it trying to get these opportunities. That's what I'm truly trying to focus on. So you can use cash. Bridging is another alternative, which gives Gives you the power of cash, but you're going to pay some uh, decent rates on that, I would say. And of course, mortgages. Most of the time, a mortgage is going to be 75% of the purchase price of the property. So you will still need some equity, or of course, you can raise finance elsewhere. But you need to think about how am I funding the growth of this portfolio, initially starting with your own money and then using OPM, other people's money as it comes in. The next thing is the purchasing cost. People will screw this up. Quite often, you'd be shocked. People don't think about a lot of the purchasing costs. So, you know, you're going to have to think about, you know, are you going to need a company set up? If you've got one already, it's a one-off cost, you know, getting it set up, getting an accountant to do it. But you're going to need to do that. You're going to need to look at your applications for mortgages. A good broker will be about £500 up front for them to start doing work on your behalf. The solicitor costs, including this disbursements, by the way. So when some uh, solicitor is quoting you saying, hey, my fee is a thousand pound plus VAT, it's like, yeah, but what about all of the disbursements like searches, indemnity insurance? In general, all in for a solicitor, you can be looking at about 1500 as a reasonable cost for the all in cost. What about taxes? You might go, what taxes? Well, stamp duty, guys. Stamp duty is a tax and uh, it's a bloody big one. Now, are there ways to get out of stamp duty with exemptions? Yes, and no, I'm not gonna be going uh, through it on this video, but you do need to be thinking, what is the tax? Now, these are the general tax rates for if you don't own a property and then, you got 3% on top for a majority of purchases. So when we're actually buying it uh, for an investment, it's 3% immediately for everything over 40,000 pound. If it's 39,999, zero stamp duty, but from 40,000, it's just your straight away your 3% up to 250 grand, and then all of the other rates start adding on to that 3%. It's not bloody cheap, but believe it or not, it's a lot better than a lot of other countries. There are a couple of other bits as well. For example, uh, with your lending, you've got survey costs. Survey costs can be two, three hundred pounds. Most of the time they put that into the loan, but you can choose to pay for that separately. Uh, I've, I've never paid for it separately to give you an idea, but I always put it into the loan. And of course, you're going to have some landlord's insurance and property insurance, which is very negligible, but still a cost that you want to take account of. Then, of course, you've got your ongoing expenses. But again, I just want to remind you right now, if you're thinking, whoa, this is a lot of stuff to think about. It is. Buying property is not easy. If everyone, if it were easy, everyone would be doing it, right? It is simple, though. You just need to have the time, the inclination, the knowledge to put into this. But if you don't have that time and you're barely watching this video at 1 a.m. trying to get asleep, then this might be for you. As I said, we actually do that. My main company is Aspire Property Group. We help people build portfolios. This is only for you if you've got 100 grand-ish or more to invest. And the way we can get involved with that is by putting APG 
G in the comments, or of course I'll put a link in the comments and I'll pin it to the top. Click on there, fill in your details, and what we're doing over the next couple of weeks is opening up from some free one-to-one -one strategy sessions. There's no obligation whatsoever, it's just to give you a bit of a strategic guide on how you can personally approach this in your journey, and if you feel we're right to help you along, that's incredible as well. So, click the link, let's jump into expenses. The final thing to be thinking about with the financing of property is the ongoing expenses. So if you've done a new refurbishment on the property, the maintenance side of things and the voids will be fairly low. So we'll barely factor those in, especially in the first year or two. However, after that, you are gonna have some ongoing maintenance, but the reason I don't really factor that in as much is the rents have increased at that point and it factors in that uplift. But you definitely wanna be thinking about the insurances that are ongoing, number one, the ongoing management costs, number two, and remember the VAT, unless you're VAT registered, by the way, and of course, number three, the good old interest rates, which are not our friend right now, but I can promise you does not kill deals at all, and so please don't be worried about it. But you need to be thinking about the ongoing expenses that are gonna be coming out each month, so you, you can effectively project forward, understand your cash flow, and reliably predict your finances. So I'll do more on that. In fact, put cash flow in the comments if you would like me to do a video on showing you how to project out your profits. It's not a video I've thought of doing before. It's maybe a bit advanced, but if you want it, I'll do it. So put cash flow in there if that would be helpful. As said, guys, if you want to build your portfolio, you want us to do it for you, let's just have a chat, see if I can help you. The link's in the comments and pinned to the top. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss out. And it helps me out a lot, guys. It takes two seconds of your time. Just hit that like button for me. It really helps push this video up and show others it's valuable. And I'll see you in the next video.